Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Uh, just have a short announcement to make. Um, Kurt and Shelley and myself, we uh, would like to give an offering, a love offering to Pastor Shane uh, this Christmas and his family to show our appreciation for all that they do. And uh, so we can, um, I think it's the 7th of January, if we can have them in by the 7th so that we can present it to them on the 9th, on the 9th of January. And uh, so if you'd like to uh, get a receipt for that, if you could just... Uh, Simply write love offering on the envelope and make the check out to Chinook Bible Church. Be great. Thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands and stretch them forward this morning? Hallelujah. Isn't God good? That was pretty weak. Isn't God good? Has he blessed you in 2021? Has he blessed you even when the world tried to curse you in 2021? Hallelujah. If he's been a blessing to you, just stretch your hands forward as we just declare a blessing over our giving. Not just that it would bless us in return, but it would bless where it goes and bless the kingdom. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that we only have because you gave. We thank you that we're blessed because you are the blesser. We thank you that you are the giver of life. And we just declare a supernatural blessing over this giving. We declare that it would bless the blesser and bless the receiver, that it would be used for your kingdom, used to, to fulfill, oh God, what you have in your plans and your desires, that souls would be saved, lives would be changed and touched and stirred, and that you would move in a mighty way. God, that you would bless abundantly, going, coming, and in between. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Just going to do a few announcements um, before we get into the word. Have you enjoyed his presence this morning? Isn't God wonderful? Hallelujah. He's just so good. He's so good. Don't forget service, of course, at 10 a.m., pre-service worship at 945. We want to say how much we appreciate um, we just appreciate everybody's cooperation, I guess is the word that I would use, um, in our pre-service worship, because, you know, we, um, we just want to know that his presence is real. We want to lift him up even before we get started. We want to be able to set the atmosphere, and those of you that are wanting to visit are doing it already in the entryway, and we appreciate that, so remember that. This Thursday, everyone say this Thursday. There will be no connections this Thursday. A lot of people are spending time with families and stuff, so no connections this Thursday. But the next Thursday, we are back on as normal. And of course, church on Sunday just as normal. So the only change is that. Don't forget that. Don't forget the Feed the Kids program, the Pepsi slash Tim Hortons tin. Uh, don't forget that. And, and Dave has been sharing just uh, wonderful things about people giving outside of the tin and just giving cash, giving all that, so you can see him for that as well, because that is an arm of the church. Amen, that's an extension of Chinook Church, so remember that um, as well. Just a quick announcement, I'm going to probably get you, Joash, just to turn this one down just a hair. Um, just a quick announcement, just so everybody kind of is up to, uh, up to speed with what is happening um, with the live streaming, there's a software issue just in case some of you look for it and can't find it, or you know somebody that's looking for it and can't find it. There's a software connection issue that we're having between the software and the servers for, uh, for YouTube and Facebook. Uh, our team is working in conjunction with the creators of the software to get an update and a patch to fix that. So for now, until that's fixed, we are recording full services now, worship the whole package, and then airing them uh, that week. So everyone will still be able to get it, but just so you don't think that we're just not live streaming, we're trying to get that fixed. Uh, don't you love technology? Isn't it wonderful? Amen. Just everyone's so excited about technology. Yes. 
The only change, the only change of schedule over the holidays is just this Thursday's connections. That's it. Everything else is as normal. And then next Thursday after Christmas, connections as well. Can we just take a second now and just lift a hand and love him one more time? Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Everyone say this with me, faith-based works. Faith-based works. Believe it or not, shortly we'll be closing out on faith and starting in the new year on on another thing, another topic in this kind of theme that God has us in of understanding why we do what we do as believers. And uh, has anybody other than me over the last few weeks come to a little bit better understanding of faith? Amen. What it is, what it accomplishes, what, what it really is all about and how it affects our daily lives. And so last week we started talking about faith-based works. Everyone say faith-based works. There's works... And then there's faith-based works. Amen. We talked last week about the fact that there is fleshly-led works, works that are led by the flesh and the desires of the flesh. The desires of the flesh really are recognition and, and to be lifted up and to be recognized for good works. But the desire of the Spirit is for our good works to lift up, recognize, build up our Father in heaven and build up the kingdom of God. Amen. And we talked about uh, uh, last week, and, and it's on our YouTube channel if you want to check it out. It would do you good to check that and, and this as well. But we just kind of started touching base on the power of our works and understanding there are God works. Everyone say God works. That's the supernatural. That's the stuff we all want to do. And side note, that's the stuff we're all called to do. Amen. At least three people believe that. Amen. Well, we're going to have to go back and rehash last week, I guess. We are called to do the supernatural. Come on. We are equipped for the supernatural. God doesn't call us to anything that he doesn't equip us for. Hallelujah. And so when he gave his um, instructions to us through the teaching of the apostles to lay hands on the sick and they recover, cast out devils in his name, raise the dead, uh, uh, open blind eyes, unstop deaf ears. He wasn't just saying something for the point of saying something exciting. He was looking at you and I as the sons and daughters of God as believers and saying, these are things I want you to do. In fact, he said, everything you saw me do and greater than this shall you do. So if he's called you to it, he'll equip you for it. Don't ever say, I can't do that. If God has called you to do that, he has equipped you to do that. Because it's not of your work and your strength that it is done. It is through Christ which lives on the inside of you and the power that works on the inside of you. The divine power that works on the inside of you. Let me me just put it this way. Do you believe Jesus could raise the dead? If you don't, we got to go way back to the basics. Do you believe Jesus can open blind eyes? Do you believe he can unstop deaf ears? Do you believe there's nothing he can't do? Then why is it so hard for us to believe that we can? When he's living on the inside of us, working through us, So if he can, I can. Look at the one beside you and say, if he can do it, I can do it. Amen. But there are other works that are are separate and aside and also part of our calling that are not just raising the dead and opening blind eyes and unstopping deaf ears. They are the works that reveal Christ. Everyone say, reveal Christ. 
the heart of Christ, the love of Christ. They are the things that, that sometimes, in, in all honesty, it's a little bit harder to do. It's a little bit harder to do. It takes a little more faith to do. It takes a little more oomph to do. Everyone say oomph. It takes a little more something something to do. That's, that's taking care of the widows. That's feeding the hungry. That's taking care of the poor. That's the things that just show Christ in our everyday life that point to him, not to us, but to him. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Everyone say this with me. What are good works? Well, it can simply be defined as this. And say it with me. Everything Jesus would do. That's what good works are. If you are in a situation and you think Jesus would minister to this person, minister to them. If you know somebody in need and you think Jesus would help meet that need, then help meet that need. Everything Jesus would do out of his divine compassion and love, that is the works he's calling us to do. Let me show you something in Galatians chapter 2 really quick. This is when Paul became before the apostolic council, James and Peter, Cephas and John, and he came to declare his discovery of the grace of God and to, to get not necessarily an approval, but to get a, a mandate from them in his ministry and a production in his ministry and, and a stamp saying, this is what we want you to do. Watch in verse nine of chapter two of Galatians. Here's what he says. And when James, Cephas, which is Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived that the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and, Bar- and Barnabas. Everyone say Barnabas. Do you know what Barnabas means? The son of encouragement. Or the son of consolation. He gave me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they, and they to, be, to the circumcised story. Watch verse 10, and this is amazing. He says, they desired only that we should remember. Everyone say remember. Remember. Now, the original Greek word for that word, remember, I'm not even going to make an attempt to pronounce it. It just starts with an M. So if you have a Greek dictionary, just start looking through the M's and see if you can find it. But here's what it actually means. It doesn't actually really mean to just think of or call back to memory. It means to restore or put together. Hallelujah. To restore or to put back together. So he said they desired only that we should put back together or restore the poor. Everyone say the poor. That means those lacking anything. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, every aspect of their life. What a mandate Paul was given at this point in his ministry where Peter and... and ...really overseeing the church at that time looked at him and said, what we want you to do or our desire for you more or as much as any... together what the works that we're talking about are they are the kind of grace that we should put back together of anybody who is lacking anything that is what they do if they're down pick them up if they're discouraged encourage them if they if they're hungry feed them if they need a miracle pray with them if they're sick heal them. If they're dead, raise them. Whatever they are lacking, we have been called as the children of God to fulfill the lack in this world. Can somebody lift your hands and praise them? And then when 
what's going on, then if we as the church rise up and do what God has called us to do, all that God has called us to do, we're going to see life come into the earth. We're going to see life come into the plant life, into animals, into the world, into the atmosphere. They can say the ozone layer or the atmosphere is irreparable, but I'm telling you that if the church rises up and be, is the church and acts and lives like the church, it can repair everything that is broken in this world. And we're called to do it. We are the life. We can't be church like the world. The world dies. If all of a sudden every believer disappeared off the face of the earth, guess what would happen to the trees? The trees would die. The flowers would die. The animals couldn't survive. The oceans would dry up. Why? Because we are the life in this world earth that's why in the garden when he created everything guess what was the first thing he did after he created all the stuff he said i've got to put a man in there that has my spirit in him because if i put somebody in there that has my spirit in him that spirit will bring life to the atmosphere and the garden shall live guess when things started to die nothing died everything had life and was vibrant until man disconnected himself from the spirit of god oh hallelujah Animals weren't killing each other. They weren't fighting each other. Dogs and cats were laying down together until man disconnected himself from the spirit of God and then death came into the world. So when the church reconnects itself with the spirit of God in its true and purest form, the world will heal itself. Can somebody just give them praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We better move on so we don't just re-preach. In my defense, though, none of you all were here last week anyway. <laughs> so I guess I could re-preach it. I'm not going to relax. I'm not going to. <laughs> Amen. Everyone say this with me. Why works? Why works? Why works? We went through so many scriptures last week, and I'm just going to use one chapter here this morning. We went through so many scriptures last week revealing and understanding God's commandment for us to do good works. Now, I want everyone to say this with me. We've said it every time, but say it with me just so you don't come to me after service confused. I am not... Saved by my works. Say it again just in case your mind didn't hear it. I am not saved by my works. I'm saved by grace through faith in Christ. However. Oh no, you got to do the however with me. However. Because I am saved, I'm called to do good works. Amen. My works don't save me, but because I'm saved, I'm called to do good works. Right? If Jesus did it, we should do it. How many believes Jesus would walk by somebody that was hungry and not feed them? Because he stood on a hill and made 13, 15,000 people stand and walk upon the hill. And the work was taken. When the evening came and he saw that they were hungry, he commanded them to sit down on the green grass. He was in a desert, by the way.
Don't you think if there was nice fluffy green grass, they would have sat down earlier? Just a side note. I don't know where the green grass came from in the desert, but the Bible says he commanded them to sit down on the green grass and then he fed them with five loaves and two fishes. When he saw they were hungry, he fed them. We try that again. When he saw they were hungry, why works? Everyone say, why works? Hallelujah. There's a couple of reasons in James chapter 2 And we're going to start in verse 17. Hallelujah. Just pray this with me this morning. Jesus, expose this in my heart. Reveal it to my mind and activate it in my walk. Hallelujah. If you're writing, if you're taking notes, everyone say this with me. Number one, it perfects your faith. Hmm. Thou wilt keep him, in Isaiah says, thou wilt keep him in perfect, everyone say perfect, peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. That word perfect, that phrase perfect peace, really in its original Hebrew means perfect completeness. Or Final completeness. Everyone says, isn't that a powerful phrase? Everyone say final or finished completeness. So that word perfect means finished. Everyone say finished. We come to him who is what? The author and... All right, verse number 17 of chapter 2. Everyone say it perfects your faith. Thus also faith by itself if it does not have works, is dead. Hallelujah. I mentioned this last week and I want to say it again for those of you that weren't here. Just because a truth has been perverted, don't discard that truth. And religion of all shapes, forms, and sizes has perverted the idea of good works and has taught that good works are the access to your salvation. It's a perverted theology. They aren't the access to your salvation. Jesus is the access to your salvation. But once you have found him and you are with him and in him and represent him, then he has called you to do good works. So we can't just discard good works because good works has been perverted into something that it's not. It's still scripture. We just have to teach it right. God has called you to be healthy and blessed and prosperous. God wants you to prosper. It does not hurt God's feelings if you can't fit all the zeros on your phone in your bank account. However, it's been perverted into the idea that the size of your bank account is a representative of the size of your faith and the totality of your salvation. That's a perverted doctrine. It does not discard the fact that God wants you to prosper. We just have to teach it right. Does that make sense? So watch this. Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Someone will say, verse 18, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. Some will say, listen now, just just hear what he's saying. Some will say, I have faith or you have faith and I have works. Well, step one, that is...
Is that scripture? Now he dwells in you. <laughs> so the fullness dwells in you. So you can't have faith and not works or works and not faith because faith and works are from God and all that God is dwelt in Christ and all that Christ is dwells in you. Hallelujah. And he said, show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. foundational truth of the gospel. You can retire now. Uh, and then he says, if that's all you have in your foundation, let me show you where your theology is equal to. Even the de demons believe and tremble. So if the only foundation you have in your doctrine is that there is one God, congratulations, you have reached the theological status of the demons who believe and tremble. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. I should have talked about this last week and then there was fewer people to throw whatever you've got to throw. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? It's not non-existent it's just not alive. Everyone say it's there. It's just dormant. Hallelujah. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see? Do you get this? He's saying faith was working together with his works. And by works, faith was made perfect. Glory to God. Now watch this. Abraham, and I just want to preface this because you all know me well enough to know nobody that you've ever met perhaps, and I don't want to compare, but I'm just saying I believe it's strong. I believe strongly, and you know this, in signs and wonders and miracles and healings and miraculous healings. I've seen people's eyes pop open. I've seen people's ears unstop. I've seen dead raised. I've seen people come out of wheelchairs. I have seen God do the miraculous, and I shout just as much as you do, but that's not the totality of it. And so for this morning, we're talking about the other stuff because I think God wants us to do the supernatural. But what we've missed is this part. Everyone say, works. Watch this. He said, do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works, faith was made perfect? Now, now watch this. He said, you show me your faith without works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. Now that word by, in, in, in this context, they translated it by, by my works. But really in the original, it's much closer to the word beside. Oh, hallelujah. Everyone say beside. In connection to. I like this one, parallel with. You show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith in parallel with my works. Oh, glory to God. Did you catch that this morning? I'll show you my faith beside my works, connected to my works because to do the works of the father i have to have faith 
But if I have faith and don't do the works of the Father, I can't fulfill the will of the Father. Come on. If I do, if I have faith, everyone say this with me, I've got faith. If you ever have a moment in your life that you don't think you've got faith, open your mouth and declare to the enemy that he is a liar because God gave you faith and he doesn't take back what he gives. But Paul said, I'm going to demonstrate my faith I've got faith. If I'm opening blind eyes, I've got faith. If I'm giving the hungry a loaf of bread, I've got faith. If I'm comforting the widow, I've got faith. If I'm comforting those that mourn, I've got faith. It's what I've been anointed and appointed to do. Oh, hallelujah. If you read Jesus, his first teaching, his first message that he preached was just quoting the prophet Isaiah and saying, if you're wondering what I've been called to do, here it is, joy for mourning. Preach the gospel to the poor. Uplift the brokenhearted. Mend those that are wounded. And there's not one time, now don't, don't think I'm belittling this, but there's not one time in there that it talks about the supernatural miracles. Why? Because if you activate your faith with your works, the signs and the wonders follow them that believe. Our problem is, is we want to follow signs and wonders. We want to follow those things and see those things accomplished. And those are our goal. How many knows what a goal is? A goal is something that's ahead of you that you're trying to catch. It's the target ahead of you that you're pursuing. And so we think signs and wonders are, are our goal, so we're pursuing them. Well, we've messed that up because we don't have to pursue something that's already on the inside of us. We have to activate what's on the inside of us and perfect the faith that God has placed inside of us. Raising the dead doesn't perfect your faith. Doing the works of Christ perfects your faith and then watch the dead come to life. Oh, glory to God. Lift your hands and give them a wave offering this morning. He said, don't you see that faith was working together with his works? And beside works, faith was made perfect. Has it ever been, has it ever, things that make you go, hmm. Abraham was chosen by God to be called the father of faith. But he never performed a single miracle in his whole life. He never raised the dead. He never opened blinded eyes. He never unstopped deaf ears. All the things that we associate with faith, he never did any of those. You know what he did? He followed the heart of God. And he obeyed him. His faith was in him. Right? When God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, take him to the land of Moriah and offer him up there for a sacrifice, Abraham didn't look at God and say, wait a minute, are you going to provide a way out of this? Is this just a test? Is this a challenge? Am I still going to come home with Isaac? No. It just says, and Abraham's response to it was, Abraham rose early in the morning 
saddled his donkey, gathered the wood, got Isaac, and headed for the land of Moriah. He just obeyed God. He obeyed the word of God. And he got to the land of Moriah and he got to the bottom of the mountain. And the Bible says he left the donkey and everything else there and his servants and him and Isaac started climbing the mountain. Now about halfway up, Isaac put Abraham in the spot of real challenge of your faith. How many's ever taken a step of faith and felt great on Sunday, but Wednesday, Wednesday something happened. And it challenged what you felt on Sunday. This is what happened to Abraham halfway up the hill. Isaac says, we have the wood, we have the fire, where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. This was after he had already declared, everyone say declared, at the bottom of the mountain, I and the lad will go and return. I don't know how we're coming back. I don't know what's taking place to cause this to happen, but I have faith and trust in God. Hallelujah. Everyone say declaring the word. Declaring the word. Can I share just something really, really quick on the way by about declaring the word? I shared earlier that my father has been transferred to the Oxbow Hospital in preparation really to go home. When we were there, Uh, three weeks ago, a little over three weeks ago, um, someone had helped, helped out my mother with a hotel for two weeks that ended on the 17th, which was Friday. As I left, I texted my father and I said, I believe God has specifically and strategically had somebody do this for two weeks because I believe in that two weeks is where great transformation is going to take place. And then as a declaration of faith in my phone, In my calendar, I put December 17th, an alarm between 5 and 6 p.m. in the notebook. Dad leaves the hospital for two weeks and goes to the hospital for two weeks and goes home. That was on the 17th. My mother texts me and says, your father just left in the ambulance to leave Regina to go to Oxbow to get ready to go home. Hallelujah. There's power in trusting in him and putting it into action, right? So Abraham... Thank you. 
to his investment. kids and say, I will pay for you to go to college. There, you need to work to earn that degree. And so if that child then goes to college, lazes around for, 40, for four years, does nothing for four years, puts no effort into it, and fails out of college, and, and, and it's not because of intelligence, it's not because they can't get it, but it's just because they were lazy and didn't do the work. My investment has not been justified. Oh, somebody give them praise. Are you receiving this this morning? So what I have done is I've then taken $30,000 and I might as well use it for a
world and says, wow, wow, my investment in you has been justified by your works. Somebody give them praise. My decayo, it's been decayo or justified in your life. In other words, when you, oh, glory to God. When you perform the works of Christ, you are decreeing that everything that has been invested in my life has been righteous and divine. And here's the proof. Here's the proof. He invested faith. He invested faith in me when I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. I didn't do anything to get it. But he invested in me. He looked at everyone in here and he said, I think you've got what it takes to bring growth and blessing and healing and deliverance to my kingdom. So I'm going to put in you the faith that you need. If you are willing to put your works side by side with the faith that I have invested in you, it's going to justify my investment. And when investment is justified, it means it has brought increase. Can somebody give him praise? Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Everyone say this with me. Faith is the currency of the righteous. Faith is the currency of the righteous. You and I are righteous. How many ever has days you don't feel too righteous? Irrelevant. If he says you're my righteousness, you're righteous. And news flashed. He said you're his righteousness. Spoiler alert. <laughs> you are righteous. Faith is the currency of the righteous. Your works are the delivery system of that currency. Glory to God. We all know what an e-transfer is. You know what an e-transfer is? E-transfer is when a society has gotten so lazy... that they don't even want to drive to the bank to do their banking anymore. And when they want to give you money, they don't want to see your face or drive to your house. <laughs> so they just open up their phone, computer, or tablet, and they go, I like Al, but I don't want to see him today. But I'd like to send him $20, so boop, 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 send. And through the power of the World Wide Web, he gets a notification. Turns out Shane does like you. Because he sent you 20 bucks. Now, unless I open up my phone, tablet, or computer type it in and click send, all the 20, bu 20 bucks that I've got in my account does nothing for him. It just sits dead. It's imaginary money. There is not a box that I can go into the bank and say, which box has my money? It's all imaginary. It's all fictitious. Until you hit send or you put your card in the ATM. Glory to God. Your faith is the currency of the righteous. It's the currency that ought to be in control of the universe. But it sits dormant until we hit send. How do we hit send? By doing the works of the Father. We really should have understood this when the first things that ever came out of Jesus' mouth at 12 years old were, why are you surprised that I'm where I am? 
don't you realize I'm all about my father's business? That's what I'm all about. Well, where can we look for you next time? Where's father's business? Come on. How can I find you? Where is there work to be done? How can I track you down? Where are the works of Christ to be done here? How many would love to come to Father and say, Father, Father, you gave me a measure of faith. Here's what has happened over the last years. And the Father looked down and says, my investment is justified. My investment is justified. Wouldn't it be sad if we stood before him at some point in our life, even tonight when you go to prayer and you stand before him and he says, I invested in you and you let it sit dormant while sick are going unhealed, blind men still can't see, deaf still can't hear, the poor don't have the gospel preached to them. The brokenhearted are still brokenhearted. That neighbor of yours that you know doesn't have much, doesn't even have a dinner for Christmas, yet you have three turkeys in your freezer. Oh, man, did we ever get shushy there. That's the works of Christ. All of it, top to bottom. We want to do these ones because they have a lot of glory for us. He said, try doing these ones because they have a lot of glory for me. Can I say that again? There's people all over the TV and the internet that get lots of glory because they lay hands on the sick and they raise the dead. There's very few people on TV that are saying, wait till you see pastor this, evangelist this, minister this, so-and-so this, Tom this, Jerry this. All they ever do is feed the hungry. That doesn't seem to make... (laughs) highlights but that's where he receives his glory can we lift our hands again and just love him hallelujah see you can't boast in your faith because everyone has it hallelujah isn't that a divine truth you can't boast in your faith everyone has it Do you know that the same faith that I have standing before you as your pastor on Sunday morning, the same faith that I had in the hospital when I declared and told my body what to do and then it listened, do you know that same measure of faith is in the drug addict that hasn't even met Jesus yet? It just is sitting dormant and hasn't been activated. So let's not boast in how much faith we have and let's not try to get as much faith as somebody else has and let's not compare our faith to someone else. Don't boast in that. Don't you realize Paul's teaching, I'm going to quote him so he gets in trouble. Paul said, don't you understand that God gave a measure of faith to everybody? It's our job to justify that investment by doing the works of the Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 26 says, for as the body is dead without the spirit, so faith is dead without works. Wow. We are the body. Everyone say, we're the body. And if we don't allow his spirit to move in us, we are dead. Because spirit is what gives life to the body. Watch creation. What did did God do? Very simple. The process wasn't complicated. He went down and he spoke it. Everyone say he spoke it. Then he gave it form. Can I stop there to say man wasn't created when he put his hands in the dust? Man was created when God said, let us make man. Because when he speaks, it happens. But it was without form. So that's when he came down and gave form to what he had created. And what was the very first thing he did? He breathed his life in him because he knew if his life wasn't in him and his spirit wasn't in man, the world would fall apart. 
The body had no life without the spirit. It was there, but it was empty and no life without the spirit. Just like our faith is there, but doesn't have life until we activate it and put our works into it, right? And do the works of the father. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Just lift your hands and give God praise for a second. The body is dead without the spirit. Faith is dead without works. Hmm. You ever ask why we're not seeing the supernatural? Be honest, I won't get you to lift your hands. But how many ever in the run of a conversation has asked the question or posed the thought Why are we not seeing the supernatural like we should? I want everyone to say this with me. We won't see God works until we're willing to do good works. Until we're willing to do the stuff that doesn't get us any glory, but we do it just because we love the kingdom. We can't expect to see the supernatural that does bring glory. Don't tell me that you're willing to lay hands on the sick and raise the dead. And that's what God has called you to do. If you're not willing to feed the hungry, minister to the poor in spirit, and encourage the discouraged. Come on. Is that fair? Because it's all his works. Everyone say, it's all his works. It's all his works. You can't neglect his works and fulfill his will. Wow. I want you to say that with me. I can't neglect his works and fulfill his will. I can't neglect the poor. That's spiritually, financially, physically, emotionally, whatever they are poor in, in their life, I can't neglect that and fulfill the will of the Father. How do I know? Watch Jesus. The Bible says everywhere he went, he did good. Sometimes... That was delivering a man who was possessed of the devil and locked in the tombs. Sometimes it was meeting a mother on the way to the funeral of her son and raising that son. Sometimes it was just visiting a tax collector's house. Sometimes it was looking at a few thousand people that were hungry and saying, we've got to feed them. Sometimes, And see, the disciples, remember, had a disconnect there. They said, they're hungry. Should we send them away so they can eat? And Jesus said, no, 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 no. We're here to do the works of the Father. You feed them. If you see them hungry, you feed them. Come on. Doing the works of the Father fulfills the will of the Father. Is that not the most simple thing that you've ever heard? That's not complicated. If you want to fulfill the will of the Father, do the works of the Father. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with this. Stand together with me this morning. I'm going to go all the way back. Hallelujah. I'm going to go all the way back to Ephesians 2 and 10. Have you received this word this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And please don't walk away saying, what has happened to the pastor? He doesn't believe in healing anymore. (laughs) Have I got news for you? (laughs) Do you want to know, you want to know what I'm really saying? Do you want to know what I'm really saying here? Just so you're not confused. The supernatural should just be what we do.
Healing the sick, raising the dead, unstopping deaf ears, opening blind eyes, that should just be second nature to us as believers. I'm saying to fulfill his will, we got to do some of the stuff that's not second nature to us. That's not taking away from the supernatural. You want to get close to God and operate in the supernatural? Start doing some of the things that he's called us to do that aren't the supernatural. You want to get close to Jesus? Start doing what he would do. Does that make sense? The supernatural should be natural to us. Is that, that a fair statement? It should be natural to us. When we see somebody sick, we shouldn't think to ourselves, man, I wish Benny Hinn was here, or I wish Smith Wigglesworth was still alive, or I wish, you know, Jesus was here to do this. We see somebody sick, it should just be second aid. Oh, you're not feeling good? Well, let's deal with that. Be healed in Jesus' name. All right, now I've got to come back over here so I can help this lady out who's struggling. Come on. Do you know that the supernatural should be the easy stuff to do? Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and 10. We are his workmanship. Created in, everyone read it aloud with me. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. That word good, good works, and the original is agathos. That's the closest translation to it, and that's the best I can pronounce it. But you know what it really means? Divine works. We are created in Christ Jesus to do divine works. The works of the Father. Can we love him this morning? The works of the Father. Hallelujah. What are good works? What are divine works? Absolutely everything that Jesus would do. Do it. Can somebody say amen? top to bottom. And if he has called us to do those, he's equipped us to do those. So I'll ask you, I'll flip the, the script on you. Everyone say this with me. There are no God works and good works. It's all God works. That's the catch. It's all God works. If it benefits the kingdom, it's God's works. If it brings healing, it's God's work. If it lifts up the downtrodden, it's God's work. If it encourages the discouraged, it's God's work. We are his hands, we are his feet. Let's do his work. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Just take a second and just love him this morning. Just love him this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. We're going to close in prayer. Just stretch your hands forward. Declare this with me. Would you just declare this with me? Every work I do that is a work of the Father decrees that what he has done in me is righteous and divine. It justifies his investment and perfects my faith. And my perfect faith has no limits. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word. Oh, hallelujah. I pray, Father, that this word would just find a place in us and begin to work through us. Father, I feel like we as a church should just have a reputation. They love people. They love the kingdom. 
and they love Jesus. We are your hands, we are your feet, we are an extension of who you are. So Father, I just pray in this house this morning, each and every one of us that are listening, everyone that is listening from home, I just pray that something stirs in us that we want to perform the divine works of our Father which is in heaven. Let our testimony be like Jesus' testimony was at 12 years old. If you want to know where to find me, I'll be about my father's business. If you want to know what my plans are, I'm about my father's business. If you want to know what direction I'm taking, I'm about my father's business. That the kingdom of God may be thoroughly furnished. That the kingdom of God could lack nothing that those that are not within the kingdom would find their way into the kingdom seeing the love of Jesus shine forth in our hearts I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus even in this season hallelujah we're so thankful that you came we're so thankful that you came and spent 33 and a half years here showing us how to be you teaching us how to walk like you, talk like you, act like you, move like you. And 2,000 years later, God give us the strength, the tenacity, and the courage to do it. I declare a blessing and decree a blessing over everyone that is in this place this morning. I declare you healthy if you're sick. I declare you uplifted if you're downtrodden. I declare you encouraged if you're discouraged. I speak healing into broken bodies. I speak healing into broken spirits. And I declare the power of Jehovah God in operation in our lives. Be with us as we go this week. Bring us back again next week in your power, your grace, and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you just give God praise as you're dismissed this morning?